Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be looking at an exponential equation from the American high school mathematics examinations, which are also known as AHSME. I'll share some links down below. You can go ahead and check out the problems. Today, they are known as AMC 10 and AMC 12. So we have this equation, x squared minus x minus 1 to the power x plus 2 equals 1. This problem appeared in 1985, by the way. So when we look at an equation like this, where we have variables on the left-hand side, an exponential expression, and one on the right-hand side, we have a special case, or three cases. So if a to the power b is equal to 1, a, b here being, you know, expressions, a can be 1, and pretty much b can be any real number, because 1 to the power any number is 1, so it doesn't matter. Second case is a equals negative 1 and b is even because negative 1 to the power any even integer is going to be positive 1. And the third case scenario, that's why this is special. Normally, these kinds of equations are not going to produce this many cases, but with 1, it's a different scenario. What is the third one? The third one is the exponent being 0. Because if you have something to the power 0, it's always 1, with the exception of a zero base, so a should not equal zero, and b must be zero. So you have something like five to the power zero, and that's equal to one. Make sense? So we have three cases. We're gonna go ahead and take a look at each case, solve and find the you know solutions, and then we're going to be looking at a graph, which is kind of interesting because that'll allow us to you know uh, approach it from different angles. All right, great, so let's go ahead and take a look at each case. I'm gonna number the cases, one, two, and three. Obviously, there's another way to approach this problem, which I'm also going to sh First case, we have x squared minus x minus one being equal to one. So x squared minus x minus one, which is the base, set it equal to one. What do you get from here? If you subtract 1 from both sides, you get x squared minus x minus 2 equals 0, and that is a quadratic equation. So, we can solve it, right? And this is a factorable quadratic equation, so we can go ahead and write it as x minus 2 times x plus 1 equals 0. You know, you're looking for two numbers whose product is negative 2 and whose sum is negative 1. Those numbers are negative 2 and 1, and they make up the factors. Easy, right? From here, we get the x values. x is equal to 2, or x is equal to negative 1. So we got two solutions. Let's go ahead and save them for now. Since we said that when the base is equal to 1, b can be anything, I didn't write it down, but b is basically any real number, then we don't really care about what the exponent is going to be. Okay, so those are the two solutions, but at the end we have to check everything, all right? So let's go ahead and continue with the second case. Case number two, we have the base equal to negative one, and the exponent must be even. Now, if you add 1 to both sides, you get a simpler quadratic equation. It's quadratic, but it's factorable, very factorable. And from here, you get x times x minus 1 equals 0. And this gives you x equals 0 or x equals 1. Great. Now, x plus 2 equals even means what? 2 is even, so x must be even. Now, we're going to go ahead and check our first findings with the second criteria. Is 0 even? Yes. Is 1 even? No. So we're going to discard it. We can't take an uneven number. So we're going to go with x equals 0 only. So far, it looks like we have three solutions. x equals 2, x equals negative 1, and x equals 0. Let's see if we're going to get more. So we're going to look at case number 3 now. Case number 3, let's remember what it, what it was. It was the base not being 0, but the exponent being 0. Okay. So we have x squared minus x minus 1 does not equal 0, and x plus 2 equals 0. So you don't have to worry too much about the first condition, because second one is easier to check. So we get x equals negative 2 from here. So that seems to be a solution, right? So let's go ahead and frame it. 
x equals negative 2 seems to be a solution, but it needs to check here, right? So instead of looking for the solutions that's not going to make it 0 or will make it 0, it's easier to plug in negative 2. So if you plug in negative 2, negative 2 squared minus negative 2 minus 1 is 4 plus 2 minus 1, and that is equal to 5. Obviously, 5 does not equal 0. But you could also solve this equation as a quadratic and find the x values, which we're going to take a look at later. Okay, so those are the solutions so far. Looks like we got four solutions. Let's go ahead and write them all. So the smallest one we got was negative 2, and then we got negative 1, and then we got 0 and 2. Okay, looks like we got four solutions, but let's go ahead and take a look at the graph. So we'll compare our findings with the graph, and obviously you're going to see some surprising results. And now we're going to also talk about what happens with the base not being zero. Okay? All right, let's see what happens with the graph. So here's the graph of y equals x squared minus x minus 1 to the power x plus 2 and y equals 1. y equals 1 is a horizontal line and our graph is kind of curving up and down. So there seems to be three intersection points. So according to the graph, we have three solutions. x equals negative 2, x equals negative 1, and x equals 2. But we're supposed to have four solutions. Remember, when we wrote out the solutions, we got what? We got negative 2, we got 0. Well, actually, I should probably write the negative 1 first. Negative 2, negative 1, and then we got 0 and 2, right? So we got four solutions. Why are we not getting all four? We have negative 2, negative 1, and 2. We have negative 2, negative 1, and 2. Why don't we have 0? Okay, here's the problem. When you replace x with 0, you're going to get negative 1 to the power 2. I mean, this is obviously equal to 1, right? That's not a problem. But with the exponential functions, when you have a base and a variable as a variable and the exponent as a variable, so something like this, when we have a negative base, it becomes problematic. Why? Remember the case we talked about? We said that, okay, if a to the power b is 1, a is negative 1, and b must be even. If b is not even, then we're going to get something like, for example, negative 1 to the power 3, right? That's obviously not going to equal 1. But what happens if we have a fraction like negative 1 to the power 1 half? Or what is negative 1 to the power square root of 2? You see, those are problematic. This could be written as square root of negative 1, which is not real. So we run into issues when the base is negative. That's why it's not well defined. You know, it's problematic. And we don't see that's uh, part of the graph. So we don't see this point right here. Okay? But there's also a section of the graph that we don't see between two points. You see those two dots? Okay. These two dots, right? Okay. Those two dots are where the function equals zero. So here's where the base equals zero comes in. Okay, so when the base is equal to zero, this one, x squared minus x minus one equals zero, this is going to give you some interesting results. Sorry about the, the crowded space. Let me go ahead and clean this up so I can kind of write it down here. So when x squared minus x minus one is equal to zero, if you solve this by quadratic formula, you're going to get negative b, one, plus minus the square root of b squared, one plus four, which is five, divided by two. So this gives us two solutions, 1 plus root 5 over 2 and 1 minus root 5 over 2. You know that this is a very, very, very special number known as golden ratio, and the other one is its conjugate. So those are the points that we're talking about. Obviously, this is a negative, and this is the golden ratio. And our function, on that interval, the base is always going to be negative. Therefore, it's not well-defined. That's why you don't see that part. And... This brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.